Well, here we are, rocking, well, standing by the Christmas tree. My motto, many of you will know, is laugh often and laugh loud. And uh, often at this time of the year, I do in, uh, get invited to be an after-dinner speaker um, uh, in various places. Um, and uh, I bring a bit of Christmas humour but with a, a Christmas message as well. So, a bit of fun. I've got my Christmas book here and uh, I'm going to share a bit of humour with you. If you can, laugh, laugh loud. If you must, groan. But interspersed, we're going to have a bit of a quiz and, uh, well, let's see what unfolds. Did you know that the average person gains about six pounds at Christmas? Well, here are some guidelines for Christmas eating. If you eat something and nobody sees you eat it, then it has no calories. Drink a diet drink with chocolate. And then the calories in the chocolate bar are cancelled by the diet drink. When you eat with someone else, calories don't count. That's if they eat more than you do. Drink used to be for medicinal purposes. Pur purposes. Um, so, drinks don't count. Mulled wine, for example. And if everyone else around you gets fatter than you do, then you'll look thinner. Broken biscuits have no calories because when you break them, the calories leak out. And again, food with similar colourings have no calories. So turkey and white chocolate, for example. Anyway, that's just a few tips for you for Christmas eating. Did you know that if the three wise men had been three wise women, they would have asked for directions, they would have arrived on time, helped to deliver the baby, cleaned the stable and brought practical gifts like a casserole and so on. The Christmas cracker. Mm. Christmas cracker jokes. He is some of the worst. What does Santa get if he gets stuck in a chimney. Claustrophobia. What do they sing at a snowman's birthday party? Freeze a jolly good fellow. And the man who stole the advent calendar. What happened to him? He got 24 days. What kind of a motorbike does Santa ride? A Holly Davison. What do you get if you cross Santa with a duck? A Christmas quacker. And what's the best Christmas present in the world? A broken drum because you can't beat it. And why does Santa have three gardens so he can ho ho ho? This Christmas is going to be different. So they keep telling us, but I'm thinking now we've left the EU, there'll be no Brussels. What do snowmen wear on their heads? Ice caps. How does good King Wenceslas like his pizzas? Deep pan, crisp and even. Who hides in the bakery at Christmas? A mince spy. What did Adam say to his wife on the night before Christmas? It's Christmas Eve. What do you get if you eat Christmas decorations? Tinselitis. What do you get if you cross a Christmas bell with a skunk? Jingle smells. You know, I've been struggling to get to the um, chocolates in my advent calendar. Foiled again. The best is yet to come. What does the Queen call her Christmas broadcast. 
The One Show. You know, Father Christmas was on a speed date and he pulled a cracker. Mary and Joseph knew when Jesus was born that he was seven pounds six ounces because they had a way in the manger. What did Cinderella say when her photographs didn't arrive on time? One day my prince will come. What do you buy the woman who's got everything? Well, two years ago, I bought my wife a bag and a belt, and the Hoovers never work so well. Last year, I bought her a fridge, and she loves it. I know she does, because every time she opens the door, her face lights up. Oh, did you know Olive gets out of prison this week? It was 50 years ago that she was put away for being rude to Ru Rudolf. Olive, the other reindeer, used to laugh and call him names. Sad news, Rudolph has been taken ill. Father Christmas has had a bit of a dilemma. He borrowed a big chicken to lead the reindeer. On a trial run, there was a nasty accident and the chicken and the reindeer ended up in a big heap. By the time the RAC arrived, the chicken had gone. And the RAC man said to, to uh, Father Christmas, You know what your problem is? Your big hen's gone. I went to see a pantomime last year, and the central character was a little girl who wore a red cape, and she went around swearing at the big bad wolf. It was called Little Rude Riding Hood. So I said, I would like a wombat for Christmas. And when I was asked why, I said so that I can play wom. It's been a bit chilly recently. And uh, on, on local radio this morning, they advised that if you go out in the cold, you should take the following items with you. A shovel, blankets or a sleeping bag extra clothing including a scarf, a hat and some gloves. 24 hours supply of food and drink, de-icer, rock salt, a torch and some spare batteries, a safety triangle, a tow rope, a petrol can, a first aid kit and some jump leads. I don't mind telling you I felt a bit of an idiot sat with all that stuff on the bus. I have to leave time for a bit of laughter. A reindeer walked into a pub, strolled up to the bar and ordered a pint of lager. Unfazed, the barman poured out the lager, passed it to the reindeer, who handed over a £10 note. The barman handed over 20 pence change. Oh, I have to say, he said, you're the first reindeer I've ever seen in here. The reindeer looked at his change and said, tell you what, sunshine, at these prices, I'll be the last reindeer you ever see in here. Something a little bit more serious. The 12 days of Christmas. No, I'm not going to sing them. In the church... Christmas refers to this 12-day period that starts on Christmas Day. And this is where the 12 days of Christmas come from. The world celebrates Christmas for 12 hours. But the church celebrates it for 12 days. Because the gift of Christ is with us 12 months of the year. So the 12 days of Christmas, the song. When most people hear this, they think of the song. A song which actually had its origins as a teaching tool. It was used to instruct young people in the meaning and the content of the Christmas Christ, Christian faith. From 1558 to 1829, 
Roman Catholics in England were not able to practice their faith openly. So they had to find other ways of doing it, of sharing their beliefs. And this song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, is one of the ways in which they did it. The Twelve Days of Christmas is, in a sense, an, 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 an allegory. Each, each, I won't say that again, each of the items of the song represents something of religious significance. The hidden, hidden meaning of each gift was designed to help young Christians learn their faith. The song goes, On the first day of Christmas, by true love gave to me, the true love represents God, and the me who receives the present is the Christian. The partridge in a pear tree, this is Jesus Christ, who died on a tree and is a gift from God. The two turtle doves, the Old and the New Testaments, another gift from God. The three French hens, faith, hope and love, the three gifts of the Spirit that abide. The four calling birds, the four Gospels, which sing the song of salvation through Jesus Christ. The five gold rings, the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, the books of Moses. The six geese are laying the six days of creation. The seven swans are swimming, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. The eight maids are milking, the eight beatitudes, or as someone once called them, beautiful attitudes. The nine ladies dancing, the nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. The ten lords are leaping, the ten commandments. The eleven pipers piping, the eleven faithful disciples. The twelve drummers drumming, the twelve points of the Apostles' Creed. So the next time you hear the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, consider how this otherwise non-religious sounding song does have its origins in the Christian faith.
I've been reading a book that I got last Christmas. It's, it's, it's about anti-gravity. You know, I, I find it hard to put down. How long does it take to burn a candle down? Oh, I think about a wick. I asked if I could have a puppy for Christmas and I was told that I would have to have turkey like everyone else. Did you hear about the bald man who got a comb for Christmas? He said, I'll never part with it. If you're wondering what to buy people for Christmas this year, here's some books that are on the bestsellers list. The Art of Kissing by Miss Alto. How to Guess What You're Getting for Christmas by P. King. How to Get a Great Present by Be Good. Season's Greetings by Merry Christmas. Sledging for Beginners by I.C. Bottom. Questions About Christmas by I Dunno and Know A Little. Surprise presents by Oh My Gosh! Now we're coming to a quiz and uh, I have to put uh, my hand on my heart and confess that I kind of, well I know all the answers but if I didn't have them in front of me I would have struggled with some of them. So there are 15 questions. You might want to pause this and go and get a pen and a bit of paper and just for fun see how many uh, you get right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the 15 questions and then uh, before I finish I'll give you the answers. Question number one. The snowman was shown on television for the first time on Boxing Day of which year? Was it 1980? 1982 or 1985? Question number two. Which British monarch delivered the first ever Christmas message? Question number three. How old is Kevin McAllister in the film Home Alone? Question number four. According to 1946's Christmas classic, It's a Wonderful Life, what happens every time a bell rings? Question number five. In the film Elf, what's the first rule in the code of the elves? Question number six. The film Die Hard takes place on Christmas Eve, but in which city? Question number seven. Which famous US political figure and celebrity makes a cameo in Home Alone 2? Question number eight. Which March sister opens LM Alcott's Little Women by grumbling, Christmas won't be Christmas without any presents? Question number nine. In Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, what do the Dursleys give Harry for Christmas? Question number 10. Which character declares Merry Christmas one and all in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol? Question number 11. In which children's classic is it always winter but never Christmas? Question number 12. What year was Clement C. Moore's poem, The Night Before Christmas, first published? Was it 1821, 1822 or 1823? Question number 13. If you added them all up, how many gifts are given in the 12 days of Christmas? Question number 14. What is the best-selling Christmas song of all time? And question number 15. Dr. Zeus's The Grinch attempts to steal Christmas from which unsuspecting town? I love kids. I used to go to school with them. 
Well, a recent survey revealed that one in three young adults have no idea that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And there are some other blank spots too surrounding the Christmas story. Here are what some children aged 49 years had to say when questioned about certain aspects of the story. What gifts did the wise men bring? J5 says the three wise men brought Jesus presents of gold, frankincense and smyrrh and silver but I think he preferred wrestling toys. Daniel 7, I know for his birthday he got money and gold from the wise men but I would have given him a Liverpool kit. Dominic 6, I don't know what the three wise men brought Jesus, but I'd have given him a tin of biscuits. I think Mary and Joseph would have all liked a biscuit. Ellie 6, uh, when he was born, three kings brought him gold, coins and a sheep. And what animals were there when the baby Jesus was born? Matthew 6, there were sheep, horses and a crocodile outside the stable. Ruby 6, at his birth there were oxen, a donkey, three camels, three birds, all white and three cats, all black. Who was the angel Gabriel? Erin 6, the angel Gabriel is a big white fairy. He helped Mary and Joseph look after the baby, kind of like a doctor. J5. There was also an angel called Gabriel whose favourite thing was to fly around all day. Molly 6. Angel Gabriel was also there and he had yellow wings and a white costume. Who is Jesus? J5. Jesus was a king and he wore a crown even though he was a baby. It was a really small crown. Antonia, age seven. Jesus is Mary and God's little boy. Zoe, six. Jesus is really old and his birthday was on Christmas 2007 years ago. Sarah, seven. Jesus is a mystery man. Where was Jesus born? Charlotte, six. A long way away from Liverpool. Alexi, age five. Jesus was born in a stable made out of hay with string round it. I had to call in at the Grand Hotel in Scarborough yesterday. And as I arrived, there was a bit of a commotion. There were two men in the entrance and, and one was shouting, I'm better than you and the other was shouting back no I've won more than you and it, and it went backwards and forwards you think you're good you're no good I'm the best of the best and it was almost as if they were coming to blows anyway I walked around them and I went to the uh, desk and I said to the girl behind the desk what's going on here she said, oh, there's been a chess championship today and there we have some chestnuts boasting by an open fire. Something a little bit more serious. It was the night before Jesus came and all through the house, not a creature was praying, not one in the house. Their Bibles were laying on the shelf without care in hopes that Jesus would not come there. The children were dressing to crawl into bed, not once ever kneeling or bowing a head. And mum in a rocker with baby on lap was watching the late show while I took a nap. When out of the east there arose such a clatter, I sprang to my feet to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. When what to my wondering eye should appear, but angels proclaiming that Jesus was here. With a light like the sun sending forth a bright ray, I knew in a moment this must be the day. The light of his face made me cover my head. It was Jesus returning, just as he said. 
and though I possessed worldly wisdom and wealth, I cried when I saw him in spite of myself. In the book of life which he held in his hand was written the name of every saved person. He spoke not a word as he searched for my name when he said, it's not here, my head hung in shame. The, the names of the people had been written with love he gathered to take to his father above. With those who were ready, he rose without sound, while all the rest were left standing around. I fell to my knees, but it was too late. I'd waited too long, and this sealed my fate. I stood and I cried as they rose out of sight. Oh, if only I'd been ready tonight. In the words of this poem, the meaning is clear. The coming of Jesus is drawing near. There's only one life. And when comes the last call, we'll find that the Bible was true after all. OK, time to pick up your quiz sheets. Here come the answers. The snowman was shown on television for the first time on Boxing Day in 1982. It was George V who delivered the first ever Christmas message in 1932, which incidentally was the year when Methodist Union took place. Kevin McAllister was eight in the film Home Alone. According to the 1946 Christmas classic, It's a Wonderful Life, every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. In the film Elf, the first rule in the code of the elves is treat every day like Christmas. The film Die Hard takes place on Christmas Eve in Los Angeles. And the famous US political figure and celebrity that makes a cameo in Home Alone 2 is none other than Donald Trump. It's Joe March which opens Alcott's Little Women, grumbling Christmas won't be Christmas without any presents. And in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, the Dunsleys give Harry 50 pence for Christmas, a 50 pence piece. And in Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol, Tiny Tim declares Merry Christmas, one and all. It's always winter, but never Christmas in the lion, the witch and the wardrobe. And Clement C. Moore's poem, the Night Before Christmas was first published in 1823. If you added all the gifts of the 12 days of Christmas, you would come to a total of 364. And the best-selling Christmas song of all time, White Christmas by Bing Crosby. And the final question. The Grinch attempts to steal Christmas from which unsuspecting town? Whoville. Whoville. Well, many congratulations if you managed to get uh, uh, even one out of 15. As I say, that was just for fun. And so I'm going to bring this time to a close. For 21 years, I was a chaplain in a young offenders institution, Diebold, near Barnard Castle. And one of the highlights of my Christmas time was the Christmas carol service in the prison. When the lads would come and uh, guests would come too and all would sit together. And the lads would take part in the service. And I have a copy here of a poem that was written by one of the inmates. This was in Christmas 2006. 
I knew it was Christmas when my mum said to me, come on darling, give me a hand with the tree. Out came the baubles and tinsel so shiny, which makes most families so happy and smiley. At school, I remember the nativity plays. It makes me think back on those happy days. It's easy to forget what Christmas is about. Not me. I know it was the birth of Jesus, no doubt. As I've grown up, the message is still there. It's time for celebration, families and care. I might be in prison on this Christmas day, but no way will I let my memories go away. I hope this Christmas you all have great fun. But please take some moments to remember God's Son. As this poem draws to an end, this Christmas will you try and make a new friend? Because sometimes at Christmas, not everyone's lucky to have someone special they can call Buddy. Well, however you spend this Christmas, I hope that you know the real presence of Jesus with you. I hope that you do have some fun and some laughter. And I hope that uh, in these moments that we've shared together, that you've, uh, you've had one or two chuckles. God bless you. A very happy and blessed Christmas to you all.